order and ask all those in attendance to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilwoman Barnum. Here. Councilwoman Hush Larray. Here. Councilman Perticone. Here. Councilman Seely. Here. Supervisor Bello. Here. An attorney for the town. Here. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you all for being here. I have a couple of uh, remarks and announcements to make. Uh, before we get started. First and foremost, we are joined today. Uh, I see a number of members of our uh, public works team who are in attendance tonight. I think uh, the uh, men and women who are here worked extraordinarily hard on behalf of uh, citizens of Aronicoy and the taxpayers of Aronicoy uh, under very trying circumstances this week uh, on little to no sleep. And uh, I think uh, uh, they deserve our thanks and gratitude for keeping us safe uh, and, uh, and getting us through the storm earlier this week. So on behalf for the, the town of Veronica and the citizens, I want to thank you and encourage everybody to join me in a round of applause. Good job, fellas. Thank you guys for your work and thanks for being here tonight. Um, I, the uh, presentation we were going to make to the Junior Lancers cheerleaders um, uh, has been postponed to next month, so stay tuned. Uh, they will be back at the March uh, town board meeting. I also have a number of announcements uh, to make about upcoming events in the, in the town. Um, on uh, February 26th is our rec department's uh, February uh, family fun night. It's from 6 to 8 o'clock at, Ste at Stepping Stones Learning Center. Again, it's on February 26th from 6 to 8 o'clock uh, in the evening. This is a free event, uh, a free family event uh, uh, that evening. Uh, also, we are uh, uh, ready for the next step of our senior services project uh, and report that we've been working on um, as a result of several public public input sessions and a, um, a survey that was mailed to residents and available online. Um, Lifespan, who's been working on this project with us, uh, is going to report to the community on March 10th at 7 o'clock in the library meeting rooms. Again, that's March 10th at 7 o'clock in the library meeting rooms where we're going to learn some of the results of the public uh, surveys and uh, some, in, you know, some of the uh, input that we received uh, at the forums and we could talk about the next steps in our senior services study. So again, that's March 10th at 7 o'clock. Um, we also have the next step in our active transportation plan. That's going to be on March 22nd at 7 o'clock in the library meeting rooms. Again, that's March 22nd at 7. That's for the active transportation plan. On, uh, we have, and also we have the Invigorate Rondequoit is scheduled for April 30th. It's not too early to start planning for spring. Uh, so again, that's April 30th at 8.30 at Town Hall. So mark your calendars. Um, and uh, and get ready for that. So, um, having said that, we have uh, uh, public input. We have one speaker signed up in advance to speak, and that's uh, Mr. Robert Dates. Uh, Robert Dates, 40 Delta Terrace. Uh, I appreciate the uh, concern the town board has shown over this. I want to thank Mr. Perticone and. Uh, Greg Merrick for showing up and uh, expressing some concern today. I just want th this. This uh, is for you, sir, and I'll leave this with you. Okay. Sure. Uh, through Freedom of Information Acts, I, I I have acquired the blueprints of 423 Lakefront. The blueprints don't even come close to resembling what needs to be done on this project, as far as floor repair, roof repair, foundation repair. Uh, I have shown this to an architectural firm and a well-respected uh, home inspector here in, in the community. And they, they, they seem to think it's a seventh grade BOCES class drawing, <laughs> basically. The biggest issue I have here, sir, uh, is this BP1 form with workers' comp. I have taken this to uh, Mr. Neiman, the head workers' comp fraud investigator of New York State. I showed him this at his office. And he seems to think it's loopholey at best. He does have this info to look into it. Because how a, a homeowner can go through the town with a permit and, and, and architectural blueprints and say, I don't need any comp compensation. I don't need any liabilities. I don't need any disabilities on guys through Craigslist. He's flying through there. 
All they need to do right now this time of year is take a heater in that place, a salamander. Heat it up, and you're going to have a cow kicking over a lantern. And what do we got? We got a falsified BP-1 form. That's all the insurance that we got is a piece of paper. Uh, you will have the information, and, and I appreciate the letter, Mr. Bell. Thank you. I don't, I don't agree with it 100% on the insurance <laughs> angle, but, but it, it, it is what it is. Okay. Uh, I have reported this to the New York State Code Enforcement. So you may be getting a call from a Mr. Uh, Garrett, uh, I forget his name, sir. I have it written down here. It's not important, but uh, you'll be, uh, Hayworth. Okay. Uh, I have expressed my concerns about how the craftsmanship on this building is going. Cinder blocks in the ground with a sill plate build office so they can come back in the spring and, and fix the foundation. It's the most, excuse my French, the most half-assed job I've ever seen in my life. Doesn't make any sense in 35 years of, of construction. Okay, uh, we are concerned about the project moving along if it ever did because we can't differentiate from contractors from other traffic floating around there. Won't be able to tell who's who at this point. And it's just bad news all around. We're all familiar with the situation and, I, and I'll leave it at that. I'll let you look at this folder. Okay. Thank Great, you. sir. Thank you. You're going to leave that with us? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Yes, All right. Uh, was there anybody else who would like to address the board but did not have an opportunity to sign up beforehand? Seeing none, uh, we'll close public input. Financial report. The, this financial report displays the second pass of the 2015 year-end financial results for the town as of January 31st. The town's books will remain open until the end of February so as to channel and pay outstanding commitments that are still in process and to properly account for and book the remaining revenue that is owed to the town. Again, next month at the March Town Board meeting, I will present the 2016 monthly report along with another iteration of the 2015 financial results as of the end of February. The 2015 financial results will not be presented again in this forum until June, at which time our auditors, the Bonadio Group, will review and present the town's 2015 financial statement and audit results at both the workshop and town board meetings. Total and expenditures and encumbrances for the town for 2015 are $31,680,000. $638,000, excuse me, $31,638,000, favorable for the full year and 97% of budget. The expenditures break down as follows, 95.9% or $31,277,000 are actual expenses and encumbrances account for $361,000. That equates to 1.1% of the budget. The general fund expenses are 97% of budget, favorable for the full year, a total of $18,702,000. Those expenses are comprised of $18,392,000 of actual expenditures and $309,000 of encumbered expenditures. Collectively, the highway funds have expended 96.9% of budget, a total of $5,332,000. The underruns in Highways 1 and 4 more than offset the higher than budgeted cost in Highway 3. The library fund is slightly over budget. $2,442,000 of expenses in that fund equate to 103.3% of budget. The other major funds are substantially below budget. Sewer fund is currently at 89.1% of budget a total of $3,526,000. To date, stormwater drainage has expended $689,000, 84.7% of budget. As of December 31st, the general fund revenue, or as of, excuse me, as of January 31st, the general fund revenue is $17.7 million, or 93.3% of budget. To date, the town has received eight months of sales tax revenue for a total of $2,240,000, equating to 60.9% of budget. 
we expect that the remaining four months of sales tax revenue will yield at least another $1.3 million, which would take us above 100% of the general fund revenue budget and would cause the revenue to exceed expenditures. So that would be a favorable result for the town. As you can see from the report, the greater part of our major revenue sources are all in. Here are the line items that I'm referencing. $10.6 million of real estate taxes, pilot payments of $179,000, $613,000 of state aid, mortgage tax of $793,000. This line item contains nine months of actual revenue and three months of accrual. The $745,000 of franchise cable revenue contains a six-month accrual so as to represent a full year. At year end, other sources of revenue total $1,702,000 and is favorable to budget at 107.6%. Line items such as property maintenance, safety inspection fees, and interest and penalties on tax collections make up other sources of revenue. Other pertinent <coughs> results for the total town, $30.5 million has been received to date. That equates to 95.3% of budget. The real estate component of that revenue is $16.5 million. Revenue for other major funds. The library has recorded 99.1% of budget for a total of $1,960,000. Five million one hundred and fifty three thousand is in for the highway, reflecting ninety three point eight percent of budget. In highway we expect an additional three hundred eighty thousand dollars or so in chips revenue, which would bring those funds to at least one hundred percent of budget. Sewer has received one hundred point seven percent of budget, a total of three million nine hundred and seventy two thousand dollars. This concludes my financial report for the year ending 2015 that was compiled as of January 31st. So the second report, the 2016 financial results for the town as of January 31st. Total expenditures and encumbrances are $3,962,000. That equates to 11.6% of budget higher than the 8.3% of the year that has elapsed. Actual expenditures are $1,780,000 and encumbrances are $2,182,000. Encumbrances are typically high early in the year as departments plan and commit to services, supplies, and commodities that will be needed throughout the year. The general fund expenses are 11.6% of budget, or $2,305,000. That's a spending level that's reasonable, uh, again, at this point in the year. The expenditures break down as follows. Actual expenditures, $1,229,000, and encumbrances, $1,076,000. Together, the expenses in the highway funds are $577,000, 11% of budget. Highway 3 has encumbered the installment debt cost for the full year, and in Highway 4, actual SALT expenditures are high. Actual expenditures in library, in the library are under budget at 5.3%, $120,000. The other major funds are higher than the 8.3% of, of the year that has passed. Sewer fund is, 11, is at 11.9% of budget. That equates to $516,000, and that's due primarily to an encumbrance for a heavy-duty dump truck. Expenses in stormwater drainage total $277,000, 23% of budget. That fund is higher, higher than budget. That's due to the encumbrance of another heavy-duty dump truck. General fund revenue received is $1.6 million, or 8.2% of budget. Tax revenue is $933,000, 8.8% of budget. Regarding the entire town, $1.6 million, or 5% of revenue has been received to date. 
1.2 million is real estate, approximately 1.2 million is real estate tax. The library has received 6% of its budget re budgeted revenue. Highway has received 4.4% and sewer has received 9.5% of its budget. This concludes my financial report for the month of January 2016. Thank you, Annie. You're welcome. Do any members of the board have any questions or comments for Annie? Seeing none, can I have a motion to approve the financial report? <coughs> so moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Approval of minutes. December 10th, 2015, the workshop meeting. Uh, can I have a motion? Moved. And a second. Second. Uh, any questions or concerns on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And we have two abstentions, Mr. Seeley and Ms. Hushla Ray. The workshop meeting, January 14, 2016. Can I have a motion? Moved. And a second? Second. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. January 21st, 2016, the regular town board meeting. Can I have a motion? Moved. And a second. Second. Any questions, concerns, or amendments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. One abstention. And one abstention, I'm sorry, from Councilwoman Barnum. Items for board action. Item number one, calling for a public hearing on the Seabreeze and Vicinity Water District lease of a portion of 400 Seneca Road. Can I have a motion? Moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. This resolution uh, simply sets uh, the uh, public hearing for next month, March 17th at 737. Uh, it sets a public hearing for, uh, for the town board to consider ratifying a lease and amendment uh, to the Seabreeze uh, uh, at least at the Seabreeze Water Tower. Okay. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number two, authorizing the purchase of one super cab pickup truck to be used by the Bureau of Public Works. Move. And a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kiley? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, this resolution would authorize um, the supervisor to execute any and all agreements uh, for the purchase of one 2016 Ford F-150 um, XTL Super Cab pickup truck um, for the Department of Public Works. Uh, this vehicle would replace truck number 117117, which is primarily used by the Sanitation Division uh, for pump station inspections. Uh, truck number 117 is a Ford F-150, a 2007 with over 50,000 miles on it. Uh, that truck will be uh, repurposed within the department. Um, and will become the safety officer's new vehicle. Uh, the safety officer's current vehicle, the Crown Vic, uh, will be sold, is anticipated to be sold at auction later this year. Uh, thank you, Bob. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number three, authorizing an updated meeting room rental fee schedule for the Bureau of Recreation and Community Services. Moved. And a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Kiley. Thank you. Uh, this resolution updates the fee schedule for town meeting rooms located at 1280 Titus Avenue, uh, 1290 Titus Avenue, and 154 Pine Grove Avenue. Uh, in order to assess the fee schedule, uh, the department conducted a survey of other municipalities uh, within Monroe County uh, to determine what uh, those communities, um, uh, what they, uh, what those communities charge for. Uh, meeting rooms in similar size with similar amenities. Um, there were a lot of different free fee structures uh, within those communities, um, but three in particular, the town of Greece, town of Brighton, and town of Webster, all had similarly sized rooms with similar amenities. Um, at this time, I feel that the fees currently being assessed uh, for the, the meeting rooms at 154 Pine Grove Avenue are adequate. Uh, and are in line with other communities' uh, fee structures. Uh, to bring consistency to the town's uh, uh, fee schedule, uh, I, I'm uh, suggesting a change to the reservation of the fee schedule for this room at, at 1280 Titus Avenue uh, from a flat fee to an hourly fee. 
Um, in addition, uh, I am recommending a similar uh, structured fee schedule for the three meeting rooms um, at 1290 Titus Avenue. Um, these, uh, the fee schedule would be, is updated um, uh, on the meeting, the official uh, meeting request form, uh, which we, of course, administer within uh, the Department of uh, Community Services and Recreation. Uh, thank you, Bob. And again, this is for the, the meeting you scheduled with the Department of Recreation outside of library uses for those meeting rooms. That is correct. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion carries. Item number four, authorizing the new and revised contracts for various youth and family recreational programs for winter, spring 2016. Can I have a motion? Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Again, this, this authorizes all the program, uh, a number of the programs that we're going to have for the winter and spring uh, session. The town board had a copy of the contracts uh, available for review at the workshop meeting and, of course, again here at town hall uh, when we met last week. Uh, you'll see the attachment here. Again, I want to uh, thank um, uh, Katrina. Uh, Hall, Marcy, the whole staff over there, Bob, uh, you and your team for putting this together. We're again going to have a great uh, upcoming season. There's a number of new programs and, and uh, uh, returning programs coming up in our recreation department. And I encourage everybody to keep an eye out uh, for that activity guide uh, and, uh, and check out these programs. So. Seeing any other uh, questions or comments from the board? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number five, accepting gifts for a Rundequoit's Winterfest celebration. Um, can I have a motion? In a second. second. Thank you. And again, this was from the, uh, the Winterfest that we had uh, earlier this year in January. I again want to thank Bob uh, and his team, the staff of the DPW department that helped, uh, community services, the recreation department, the police department, our, our uh, fire marshal. Uh, pretty much all the departments at Town Hall touched this uh, in, in a way, and I think it was another great event. The weather uh, cooperated uh, for us, and we, we had, uh, I think, another successful winter fest. There was a couple thousand people visited Town Hall campus throughout the day, uh, and I think went very well. And so it wouldn't be possible without the generosity and support of a number of uh, folks in our community Community, and I just want to publicly thank them and list those uh, who were helpful in making this a reality. And that would have been the Aronikoi Family Dentistry, our Atari Auto Finishers, Hudson Titus Auto Service, Pontillo's Pizzeria, Paris Kerwin Associates, LaBella and Associates, Majority Leader uh, Assemblyman Joe Morelli, County Legislator Joseph Morelli Jr., <coughs> Allen Associates, Home Depot, and Wendy's. Uh, so thank you again to all of our sponsors uh, who participated and made it possible for us to have this event here. Um, any other questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, authorizing the award of bid for layout, design, printing, and mailing of the town activity guide publication. Uh, can I have a motion? Move. And a second? Second. Uh, thank you. And the bid award for this, uh, the most responsible bidder was Messenger Post uh, Media uh, for the product, for the uh, layout, design, and printing of our activity guide. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven. In the matter of scheduling a public hearing pertaining to amending the Arundaquai Community Development Block Grant Program for prior years. I have a motion. And a second. Second. Okay, Mr. Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, in the uh, CDBG, the Community Development Block Grant, uh, year 15-16, uh, the department uh, was able to res mill and resurface all of the um, roads that were that were on that plan um, with uh, funds left over. Um, that was due to some of the increased efficiencies we have with some of the resurfacing um, of some of our, our streets here in town. And with that, there is a, a sum remaining within that CDBG fiscal year. And this public hearing would call to uh, amend that, um, adding two roads that we anticipate uh, to be milled and resurfaced um, in May of this year. And that would be Alhambra and Moroa Drives. Thank you, Bob. Um, and uh, with this resolution, we'll be scheduling the public hearing uh, to be able to add those two roads to the project, Alhambra Drive and Moroa Drive. And uh, the public hearing will be uh, at the next town board meeting, March 17th uh, at 738 
uh, p.m. We'll have that public hearing before the town board votes to accept the amendment uh, to this program. Any questions or comments from the board? No? Uh, thank you, Bob, for your work on this. Uh, and because of the work of, again, you, and of course our, our men and women in the Public Works Department, we're able to add roads to this program and be able to uh, mill and resurface uh, additional roads to touch more residents here and, uh, and uh, have a good substantial upgrade. I know in a neighborhood that desperately needs it. So uh, thank you guys for your hard work. Uh, would that, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight, authorizing the capital improvement program for the town of Arundaquite for 2016 through 2021. Can I have a motion? In a second. Second. Uh, thank you. I, uh, this, uh, the capital improvement program, I have the town board look at this and note, and I want to thank, first of all, Annie Seeley and her staff, uh, her team, also, uh, again, Bob Kiley, uh, you and your team, the foreman, and everyone who had a, 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 an input. Uh, into putting this plan together. As you'll see, the, uh, the plan does not call uh, for, for projects completed this year uh, on, uh, on additional borrowing. Um, we, we are hoping to obtain grant funding for a number of projects to be able to go forward and also uh, because of some efficiencies in the apartments be able to do uh, some of these projects from the fund balance saving uh, there, thereby saving taxpayers the burden of having to borrow funds. We've uh, been able to, to put money away and save for some of these projects this year. Most notably, um, I'd like to point out to the public, you'll, you'll notice that our priorities and a lot of our focus this year is looking at funding, uh, again, to enhance our athletic fields. Um, and uh, uh, it's making uh, some more significant investments in our sidewalks roads and uh, uh, upgrades to our pump stations uh, and, and drainage programs. So uh, there's a full complete list available here of all the different projects. Um, but again, this is a, another great uh, thing for the town whereby we've been able to uh, save our resources to be able to avoid having to go to the bond market to borrow for these projects. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to make these investments later this year uh, on a project by project basis. Um, and again, our focus being on athletic fields for our youth and family and also uh, investments in our sidewalks and roads. I um, uh, would also just point out that uh, this is a planning document. So this is for planning purposes. This is, these are the funding uh, mechanisms we're, we're planning to do this year and we'll be seeking funding for some of them. Other funding are in place. Um, but the town will be conducting it's a seeker review on a, uh, as each project uh, funding is identified and we're able to move forward uh, on each project throughout the year. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine, authorizing an NCP promotion to senior dispatcher. Can I have a motion? Move. And a second. Second. All right. Mr. Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, this uh, resolution uh, would authorize the hiring uh, for a non-competitive promotion for Marissa Camus. Uh, Marissa is currently a dispatcher within the Department of Public Works working for us um, out in the shop, uh, handling the phones and also uh, running many complex reports. Uh, honestly, a lot of the CDBG um, leftover dollars that we're talking about, amending and, and adding in additional um, roads, uh, a lot of that work is directly tied to some of Marissa's work and development of a lot of the planning spreadsheets that we use um, in the department for uh, the tonnage and, and contractor fees for asphalt. So um, again, I, I can think of no uh, no more uh, worthy person for this non-competitive promotion to uh, senior dispatcher than Marissa Camus. Thank you. Uh, no, Ms. Camus has worked for the town for a number of years, and I've appreciated uh, getting to, uh, to know her and see her in action uh, over in there in the garage, and I think is going to do a, a fantastic job in this, uh, uh, in this role, and she's been doing a fantastic job over there in the, uh, uh, in the DPW department for the number of years she's been with us. So, Any other questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Camus is with us here tonight. If you want to just stand, and uh, congratulations. <laughs> Item number 10, authorizing a change in status for our current dispatcher. Uh, can I have a motion? Moved. Second. Great. Thank you. Mr. Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, there was a vacancy for a dispatcher uh, uh, last year where um, Andrew Foley was hired on a temporary basis in November. 
Um, at this time, um, we are looking to, to, to have Andrew join the team uh, full-time permanent. Uh, he is currently um, uh, on the certified uh, list of, of el eligible candidates uh, for the dispatcher position. Uh, in the last several months, Andrew has uh, worked diligently out in the shop and has integrated very well within our system. Um, and we look to uh, propose his name for a permanent position here within the town. Great. Thank you, Bob. Any questions or comments from the board? So, you know, I think Andrew's been doing a fantastic job over there. So uh, congratulations uh, on your appointment as well. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Andrew is with us tonight. If you can just stand and be recognized. Congratulations. Item number 11, authorizing the promotion of an employee to labor foreman. Moved. And a second? Second. second. Everybody. Mr. Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. We'll have a couple um, seconds. The department, due to a retirement, had a vacancy uh, for a labor foreman position um, in January of this year. Uh, for those that are unaware, the labor foreman uh, is really an extension of the management team within the Department of Public Works, serving a critical role for us as middle managers, um, directing crews in the field, um, overseeing sections of the budget. Um, and, and really taking on a lot of responsibility on call um, almost uh, every weekend. Um, there was uh, uh, many, many applicants for this, over 20 applicants. Um, the interview team narrowed and, and interviewed several different candidates. Um, one candidate was selected, and that candidate is Tom Albert. Uh, Tom has a 22 year um, has more than 22 years of employment here with the town of Arondequoit. Um, he is a, a Point Pleasant a Fire District a volunteer firefighter, uh, serving many different roles uh, for Point Pleasant, uh, most notably a deputy chief uh, for several years in 2003 and 2004, and again in 2009, and fire chief from 2005 to 2008, and again in 2010. Uh, Tom is a a member of the Monroe County Fire Bureau and has served as Deputy Fire Coordinator there for several years from 2011 <coughs> to 2013. Um, he is on the Town Disaster Committee. Um, he has worked on the 4th of July Committee for Fire and EMS Response uh, for the Fireworks uh, Show Emergency Plan, uh, the Emergency Management Team for the Town, Confined Space and Emergency Response Team. Uh, he's part of the Monroe County uh, W-E-B-E-O-C, um, uh, part of the Town Safety Committee uh, on the Confined Space Response Team. Uh, he also has several different certifications, uh, the New York State Emergency Medical Technician Certification, the New York State Hazardous Materials Technician, uh, the New York State Confined Space Awareness Certification, the New York State Trench Rescue Awareness Certification, the New York State Building Collapse Awareness Certification, and he is a New York State Safety Officer. Um, this was a, a very difficult choice uh, uh, to fill this role, uh, but Tom Albert is, is the most qualified candidate uh, for this position, and I, I couldn't be more pleased to put his name forth for this promotion to labor foreman within the town of Irondequoit. Thank you, Bob. Um, I uh, want to thank you for that presentation. Um, there were a number of just uh, superb applicants for this position, and these are difficult decisions to make. Um, and, uh, but I think that uh, uh, Mr. Alberts, the participation on these town committees, his, his certifications, and of course his community, uh, his involvement in the community make him a very good uh, choice in his years of service, obviously, to the town uh, of Aronicoy, make him a good choice and a representative for the town. Uh, in, in, the, in the position of, a, uh, of the uh, labor foreman. Um, are there any other questions or uh, concerns from the town board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed, nay? Motion carries. And I actually had an opportunity to see Tom in action earlier this week during the snowstorm uh, and got to see firsthand really how hard uh, Tom works to clear the roads. But really, it's sort of Councilman Seeley. He was out there winging, I know, uh, 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 Tuesday afternoon. But really, how hard these guys work to move that snow around. It's not an easy job. And, uh, uh, and we got to see that firsthand, how hard these guys work. So with that, Tom, congratulations. I want to stand and be recognized. Uh, congratulations on your appointment.
Item number 12, authorizing the hiring of a laborer in the Department of Community Services, Bureau of Public Works. Move it. And a second. Second. Mr. Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, where there was a vacancy uh, for a laborer position within the Department of Public Works, um, myself, Labor Foreman Champion, and Labor Foreman Labini conducted um, uh, interviews with several different qualified candidates. Um, we have selected um, Mr. Cafaro uh, to fill this vacancy within the Department of Public Works as laborer. Um, he will be assigned to the B shift for uh, some time, working uh, within the Division of Sanitation for the Bureau of Public Works. Um, this position was posted per the uh, CSEA uh, blue collar contract regulations, um, and we look forward to putting um, uh, this candidate forward to, uh, to the town board tonight. Great. Thank you, Bob. Uh, and uh, Mr. Cafaro comes to us uh, as a Ronaquay resident, a uh, graduate from East Ridge High School. So uh, uh, another resident here uh, any, uh, and who comes with some great recommendations as well. I know he'll do a fantastic job. Is there uh, any uh, questions or concerns from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Cafaro is here. He wants to stand and be recognized. Congratulations. <laughs> Item 13, authorizing the appointment of an assistant fire marshal building inspector for the town of Arundel White. Can I have a motion? So move. Uh, and a second? Thank you. Um, tonight, uh, uh, we are uh, uh, advancing the name of uh, George uh, Nalavico, uh to uh, the position of Assistant Fire Marshal and Building Inspector. Um, George uh, 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 comes to us um, from Rochester General Hospital, where he served as the Fire Marshal and Emergency Management Program Director. He is also the volunteer, uh, volunteer firefighter for the Laurelton Fire Department. Uh, and comes uh, certified as a code enforcement official uh, and a firefighter one. He is uh, somebody that a lot of folks in this community will know uh, as a uh, as a uh, ardent volunteer uh, and public servant, um, and uh, I know uh, will fit this role uh, very well. We've been without the assistant fire marshal position for uh, several months, and this is a critical need for the town, especially as we move forward in what we refer to as our troubled properties. Uh, legislation, our management of the vacant homes, uh, the code violations that we're seeing around town in order to stay on top of those and uh, be able to advance our efforts there while also being able to maintain our current inspections. Uh, this is a critical component to that, uh, being able to bring on someone with the knowledge and talent to be able to hit the ground running uh, and be able uh, to help us make some uh, significant progress there. So um, it, it, I'm very happy to advance this name. and. Um, Welcome any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, George is here. I'd like to be stand and be recognized, and congratulations. <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> Item number 14, calling for a public hearing authorizing a no parking zone on Seneca Road 200 feet east of Orenda Drive to the Newport Yacht Club. Before I ask for a, a motion, I'd like to recognize Councilman Seeley. Yes, thank you. I would like to um, move to propose local law number one of 2016 to amend section 222-62 of the code of the town of Arondequite um, to add both sides of Seneca Road from 200 feet east of Orenda Drive to the Newport Yacht Club to the list of streets on which parking is prohibited at all time and propose that this act shall be effective upon filing with the Secretary of State as required by municipal home rule law. Uh, thank you. Um, now can I ask for a motion um, on the uh, calling for a public hearing? Moved. And a second? Second. Okay, thank you. And the public hearing is going to be held on March 17th. That's the next town board meeting, the March regular town board meeting at 7.35. Any other questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 15, declaring 11 bulletproof vests and a Kodak carousel slide projector surplus property and <coughs> authorizing their destruction. Can I have a motion? Moved. And Second. 
Second, thank you. Uh, the town board has the list of the make, model, and serial number as we discuss at the town board workshop session. Do you have any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 16, authorizing attendance to New York Tactical Training Conference and Expo. Uh, can I have a motion? Moved. And a second? Second. All right. Uh, Chief Tantillo? Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This is an annual training event that we um, assign two of our officers to attend who are uh, a part of the emergency response team. Uh, that's a critical skill set that these officers possess. Those that attend the conference um, bring back the latest uh, best practices that are utilized throughout the United States and share that with the rest of the emergency response team as well as the rest of the officers at the Aronaquay Police Department. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 17, authorizing appointments to the Arundaquite Conservation Board. Can I have a motion? So moved. And a second. Second. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have a, uh, the Conservation Board uh, is, uh, are all uh, appointed. There are nine members. They're appointed to a two-year term. And uh, tonight I'm putting forward the name of nine members. Uh, three of them are new, uh, Paul Congdon, Krista Greer, and Dr. Susan Spencer. And then returning to the board, I'm recommending Michael Eveland, Stephen Grieve, Grievey, David Long, Jack Kaufman, David Stahlecker, and Daniel Janish. Um, is uh, any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Motion carries, and I want to thank them for their service uh, and, and, uh, and hard work and all the things that they do for us. Item number 18, approving the special event license for the 14th annual Sunset House 5K Run and Fitness Walk. Can I have a motion? And a second? Second. Uh, thank you. The uh, annual Sunset House 5K Walk is going to be on May 28th. Uh, at 9 a.m. starting at Cooper Road between the Chase Bank and the former uh, Evans uh, Library Branch. Again, that's May uh, 28th. Last year, believe it or not, I actually ran this one. It's not that bad. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. It's a pretty flat course. Um, uh, so I'd encourage you to check this out. It's for a great cause for the Sunset House, who I know um, has touched a lot of families uh, in our community and uh, and uh, could could use our support. So, Do you uh, recall what uh, place you finished in? Uh, we don't want to talk about yeah. that, Celia. <laughs> <laughs> I was fourth in my age group. I can tell you out of how many. So, All right. Um, with that, any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I did finish it. <laughs> Item number 19, approving the special event license for Shamrock Jack's restaurant to conduct their annual St. Patrick's Day Festival. Uh, can I have a uh, motion? Move. Move. And a second. Move that one. Got a lot of move. <laughs> we'll have second. a motion in a couple seconds. Um, uh, this is for Shamrock Jack's annual St. Patrick's Day uh, Festival. It's going to run from Saturday, March 12th from noon to 9 uh, through Thursday, March 17th, again, from noon to 9 at Shamrock Jack's. Um, this is an annual event uh, that I know is a lot of fun and uh, uh, is a good way to celebrate uh, the holiday. So, again, I look forward to, uh, to seeing you all there under the tent. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that's the uh, balance of the agenda. Uh, so with that, the next workshop meeting is on March 10th at 4 o'clock, and the next regular town board meeting uh, will be on March 17th at 7 o'clock here in the Broderick Room. I'll entertain a motion to, motion adjourn. to adjourn. And a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. of the Arondequoit Town Board on ICAT 12, Arondequoit's government access channel.